Hello and welcome to the video. This is part of the Painless Answers series and this is to answer questions from two individuals. First one is Zaggy Feedup asking uh, how do you choose the right motor and battery combination for fixed wing, particularly if you don't know the difference between a volt and amp and a watt. I'm going to cover that in a little bit of detail here. There's also another question from Tom. Tom was asking about what's the impact of changing from 3S to 4S on a particular motor without changing prop sizes and stuff. But there's a lot of confusion about this. If you're coming from a multi-rotor world into fixed wing, then you've got experience of matching motors to ESCs to batteries and how all that stuff works. However, if you're coming to electric systems on fixed wing from glow or internal combustion engines, it can be a little bit more complicated. Now there are two videos that if you want to get into this detail, I would recommend you have a look at. The first one is electrical basics for beginners. I'm gonna cover in this video the difference between volts, amps and watts. I'm gonna talk about uh, how I size stuff and some of the tips and tricks that I use. But if you want to know more about um, the electrical side, voltage, amperage, current, resistance, that kind of things, uh, wattage, then there is this video, I'll put a link down below. Second one that I would recommend that if you're relatively new to electrical power systems is check out the LiPo Basics for Beginners video as well. This one goes into an awful lot more detail than I'm going to go in here. It'll just be kind of a primer really in this video because if I went through all the topics in sufficient depth so you understood them enough to be dangerous to go and build something, this video is going to be about three hours long. So links below to both of those. So let me wet your whistle by talking first of all about volts, amps, and watts. And let's get into some of the detail about choosing power systems and then how you match your motor and prop that you've decided on to your ESC to your battery. So the first thing we're going to talk about is voltage or volts. Thanks to Voltaire for figuring this one out. Now, volt is a, a unit of electrical potential. And if you think about a little AA battery, that's typically 1.5 volts. However, the batteries that we typically use in radio control are LiPo batteries, lithium polymer batteries, and they pack an awful lot of punch in a very small physical package, which is why they're perfect for radio control. Now, the way that these batteries go together is they're made up of individual cells connected in series or shortened to S. So you have 2S, 3S and 4S batteries and those cells stacked up together increase the voltage. Every time you add another cell, it adds another 3.5 to 4.2 volts. In a LiPo battery, it's a little bit unusual as batteries go because when it's fully discharged, each of those cells in the battery is only 3.5 volts. When it's fully charged, each of those cells is 4.2 volts. So there's only a difference between in each cell of 0 0.7 volts between it being fully charged and empty. And that is one of the things that makes these batteries so good for radio control, is that even when they're empty, the voltage is still there and the voltage curves are quite flat. And that means that you can uh, maintain thrusts and things. So rather than a normal battery where you kind of keep it going until it kind of gives up completely and you throw it in the bin, a LiPo battery, you only go between 4.2 and 3.5 volts per cell. Ideally, you don't really want to go below about 3.7, 3.6 volts per cell. Now, voltage that comes out of each of those cells, so if each of those cells are, let's, let's just say they're half charged, 4 volts, and you have three of them in series, it's going to give you 12 volts, 4, 8, 12. That voltage is the pushing force or pressure in the electrical circuit that's going to push, push the current round. The way you can think about it, if you want to think about it in terms of a more physical system, is voltage is like water pressure that's sat behind the tap. The higher the water pressure, the more water is going to flow when you open the tap. The more voltage, the higher current is going to flow when you open or close the circuit in this case. Now, components in radio control are specified for particular voltages. So you'll find that motors are like three, built for 3S or 4S 
batteries. You might find the ESCs are three to six S capable, and it's become a shorthand for which voltages you can use. But remember, S is just referring to how many of the cells in series. So a three S battery is typically going to be about 12 volts. A four S battery is going to be typically around 16. Next one to talk about is amperage or amps. Now amps or amperes are what are actually flow around the circuit. That's the water that the water pressure voltage, you want to think of it like that, is actually pushing around the circuit. The more voltage there is, the more current is going to be pushed around a circuit. And that's one of the reasons why it's called a current. It's like a water current. So the same analogy, going back to that uh, water pressure in a pipe, when we open the tap and that water is flowing, that water current and the uh, current the amperage are kind of the same thing. Now, there are two things written on a modern LiPo battery. First one is going to be the C rating, and the second is going to be the capacity in milliampere hours. The capacity is if you want to think of it is how big that tank of water if we continue with the plumbing analogy is so a 3000 milliamp hour lipo has three times the energy in it as a 1000 milliamp hour lipo the c rating is a way to figure out what the maximum current is that can flow through the battery safely and by multiplying the C rating by the milliamp hour rating, it gives you the maximum current. Seems like a slightly weird way of doing it, but actually it works quite well in practice. So if we had a thousand milliamp hour battery and it had a 10 C rating, then we multiply the 10 by the 1000 milliamps, that gives us 10,000 milliamps or 10 amps. That's the maximum amperage that we can pull through it. And you'll find that things like amperage are actually in other places as well on things like speed controllers. So those are two things that you need to know, the amperage and the voltage or the number of cells in your LiPo packs. And that gets easier. Last one to talk about is wattage or power. Watt is just the volts, which is that pressure in the pipe, times the current or amperage, which is the amount of flow. Multiplying those together gives you the wattage. More wattage is more power, which is more uh, work available to do stuff. However, in reality, I never go anywhere near watts. I don't need to. If you know the currents that you're working with, if you know the voltages that everything's rated for, you can set everything up without getting too far into the weeds. So in terms of choosing a, a motor and a prop for a particular model, there's loads of different ways to do it. You can use the sites like eCalc. You can go and uh, just nick someone else's really good setup that works really well. There's the watts per pound scale. I personally use the thrust per versus the weight of the model way of doing it. Again, I have a whole video on that. If you want to go and find it out, I'll link it down below. So for a one kilogram fixed wing model, I'm going to want about 1.2 to 1.5 kilograms of total thrust for super easy launches and uh, nice gentle cruising as well. Typically the way I do it is that I will go onto something like this 3DR website, look for motors that are kind of in the range that I'm interested in and typically models will have online some kind of indication of the motor sizes that you're interested in typically given as four numbers like this is a 2814 as motor from t motors but if you zoom down to the bottom in here is all of the key detail you need you can see the amount of thrust that is being generated and that is in grams you can see the voltage of the battery in the left hand side typically 14 15 16 volts is going to be talking about a 4s battery and things like 11 uh, 10 11 12 volts is going to be be talking about a 3s battery so looking at this we can see the battery voltage that is being used for the particular test we can see the prop we can also see the amount of current that's been pulled at a hundred percent throttle so knowing that we can choose a motor and prop that will give us the amount of thrust that we're interested in and again i tend to use the thrust to weight it just is an easier way to do it the other tip is normally a bigger prop uh, spinning more slowly can produce the same amount of thrust as a smaller prop spinning more quickly, but the bigger prop spinning more slowly will do it more efficiently. And that is the way that I tend to do it on my models just to preserve flight time. And we'll talk a little bit about how the power in the battery is consumed and how you can prolong that at the end. 
So here we are, we have our prop and motor that we have decided on by looking at the tables. This is going to give us the thrust that we want and from that we now know that the maximum amperage, say for example, is going to be 36 amps that it pulls at 100% throttle and for example it's obviously running on a 4S LiPo because it's talking about 16.8 volts. Now out of the motor is three wires. These three wires connect to the electronic speed controller. Now if we put the speed controller in, the way it works is that you connect the three wires out of the motor to the three wires out of the brushless ESC. Now there isn't such thing as a ground and a positive. What the brushless ESC does is it energizes each of the coils. Uh, there's actually three lots of windings in the motor to pull the magnets around and to make the motor turn. It's actually doing quite a bit of stuff here. It's actually not only energizing each of the coils in turn to make the motor spin at the desired speed that you're after, but it's also sensing via the coils that aren't energized where the actual uh, rotor is. So there's some really, really smart stuff going on in a brushless ESC. It's essentially a little computer on its own right. Now, this ESC is rated for 40 amps in this example. We want to get an ESC that is rated for more than the maximum amperage than the motor and prop is going to pull from the table that we've looked at. Now, some people get a little bit confused about this and think, well, hang on a minute, that means that the ESC is going to be supplying 40 amps and that's too much. The motor only needs 36 and it doesn't work that way. What actually happens is the motor will pull the amperage that it needs and the ESC will supply what that current is. It might be running at 10 amps. Uh, when you're cruising, 36 amps might only be pulled for a handful of seconds when you're launching on full power. So having the brushless ESC have a little bit more capacity in it means that even if you do need to run the motor at full 100% throttle, you are nowhere near the maximum settings for the ESC, which will mean it'll last longer, it'll run cooler, and it'll work better. Now, there are two things coming out of the brushless ESC. The first is going to be a power wire that's going to plug into your battery. And we know what battery we're aiming for because we've already figured out that it's a 4S LiPo from the table that we need. So we're going to plug that in on the left hand side. And obviously we need to make sure that the ESC is rated for that size of battery. But to be honest, even basic brushless ESCs are rated for 3 and 4S. It's only more expensive ones that go up to 6S and even 12S on really big models. The other cable that is connected to the ESC is this little flying lead. This is a cable that has three connectors in it. Now there is the black ground wire. The red wire is actually providing plus five volts. And then the top wire is the signal cable for the throttle. So this little three pin servo connector is actually doing two things here. First of all, it's going to plug into the receiver and it's going to plug into the throttle channel and the PWM signal is going to go into the brushless controller and it's going to set the speed of the motor and prop in proportion to that signal. And then the red and black wires are going to actually supply the 5 volts and ground that the receiver needs in order to be powered. Plus, there's enough current capacity in that 5 volt supply to also run the servos in the plane as well. So from the flight battery, the 4S battery that we're about to plug in in a moment, it will not only power all of the power system, the brushless ESC, the motor and the prop, it's also going to provide the 5 volts you need for your receiver and your servos too. Last thing in this is going to be the 4S battery. Now again we talked about the fact that a battery uh, has a maximum amperage and we need 36 amps for the motor. We have a 40 amp ESC so I'd recommend that you can pull at least 40 amps out of your LiPo battery as well. Uh, if you are running any decent sized battery then you know what it's probably going to be able to do that standing on its head but you do need to just check the math. Then the idea is, is that even with your brushless motor and prop going at 100% throttle, pulling 36 amps, that's well under the maximum rating for the ESC, and it's well under the maximum amp rating for the LiPo battery too, and the whole system will be happy, run cooler, and last longer. 
So the last question I commonly get is, well, how do I figure out how long a battery is going to last? Well, the trick is, of course, is you want to land it and be able to check the voltage on your LiPo battery and make sure that each of the cells in that LiPo battery are above three and a half volts. So the way it works is that that number that we already talked about, you remember the 1000 milliamp hours that we did before with the 10C rating to figure out it was 10 amps? Well, if we kind of use that same example again, 1000 milliamp hours means that you can pull 1000 milliamps in an hour and that's the available power. Now, in reality, you don't pull all of the capacity out of a LiPo battery. You tend to try and pull 80% and that always means that you end up with a little bit over the three and a half volts. The trick with this, if you're not sure about how it works, is fly the model for a relatively short period of time, land it and check the battery voltage, and then you'll be able to figure out, after a couple of flights, getting longer and longer every time, how long you can fly that model before the battery is nearly empty. You don't want to push it too far. If it goes below three and a half volts, then irreversible chemical changes start to happen in the battery and it starts to perform more poorly. So if we go back to our little example of a thousand milliamp hour battery, if we pulled an amp out of it, we'd get 60 minutes. However, if we double that to two amps, it's going to take half the amount of time to pull that out, so 30 minutes. If we double it again to four amps, it's only going to last 15 minutes. If we're pulling eight amps, it's only going to last seven and a half minutes. So the capacity that is available to be used out of a battery uh, lasts as long. So that's why, in, for me, I try and always pick the most efficient way to produce the thrust that I need, because if I can keep that uh, current down, then it means that the battery will last longer and I'll get a longer flight. So that was a pretty whistle-stop tour of lots of potentially new things. Again, if you're interested in getting to know more about this, I'll link the two or three other videos that are worth a watch that hopefully by the end of it, you'll have a good enough grasp of the electrical basics for setting up a flight control system in something like a fixed wing, and you'll be able to have a crack at it. Thank you again for those that asked the questions. Do check out the other videos in the Painless Answers series. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.